uh, this time in our meeting is called the calling for calling us higher. So I wanted to call you up higher this morning. I wanted to begin in Exodus 19, verse 3. It says, And Moses went up unto God and the Lord, who called him out of the mount. Moses went up. We're calling each other up in this time. We remember also in Revelation 4, verse 1, John was called up. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the voice which I heard, as it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither. He was called up, and it was in order that he might show him things that must happen thereafter. So calling one another up, this is where our intention lies in this calling. We want to draw everyone's attention up higher, yeah. higher. <clears throat> so why do we do this? Well, first of all, there are many advantages. In the kingdom of faith, there are many advantages that are higher than us. We have to look up to obtain them. We have to set our gaze on high to be able to see these things that will profit us. I wanted to take um, a few examples in the scriptures. Now I know that some of the scriptures I'm going to be taking aren't going to be used in context as some, some might say, but I wanted to draw some parallels with the heights or something being higher and a profit to be had. <clears throat> Ezekiel 42 and verse 5 says, Now the upper chambers were shorter, for the galleries were higher than these. This is talking about a structure, but the upper chambers, those are the chambers that are higher, up. The upper chambers were shorter. Well, in ancient times, I thought of the construction. Sometimes people would build these ziggurats with the broad base levels, but as the levels continue to go up, they were smaller. They were shorter. So in this, when we ascend in these shorter levels, things are more compact. They're pressed together, more richly fitted for us to be able to partake of. So whenever we call one another up to these higher levels, we have a more concentrated area of which to partake from the Lord and to um, walk about and to be profited by. Now, as we also rise up higher in the spirit, things of the flesh and things that have to do with the earth are going to be stripped away as we rise up higher. And so these higher levels don't have to be as broad because we are being stripped of things that profit not, being more compacted ourselves, being more fitted for these higher and upper chambers. <clears throat> Uh, this particular picture of the smaller upper chambers, it, it breaks down a little bit because we know that the Lord, the higher we get, it doesn't get smaller. The, the higher we go with the Lord, the more we ascend into the heights, the more abundant Amen. the things are with the Lord. So we want to continue to go up upon these high places. Another example that I wanted to draw from was found in 1 Samuel, and this has to do with Saul, King Saul. And it is particularly having to do with his height, the stature of the man. <clears throat> First Samuel 9, verse 2, I know you remember all this. Saul, a cho choice young man and goodly, there was none among the children of is Israel a goodlier person than he. And it says, from his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. Saul was higher. Well, what do these things have to do with us calling one another higher? Well, first of all, Saul could see more clearly because he was above the common plane of sight. He wouldn't have all the obstructions that the other men might have because he was above them. He was higher than the others. His sight would also be farther separated from the realm of the earth. The higher we get away from the earth, the less we're going to have to struggle with these distractions and obscurements that come from the earth. So we want to call one another up higher. <clears throat> Again, in Ezekiel, um, it's in the 20th chapter and verse 40, it says that the Lord is going to do some things for those, those who come to the height. It says, For in my holy mountain, a high place, the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, 
there shall all the house of Israel, all them in the land, serve me. That's where we're going to serve the Lord is in these high places. But that's not all. He says, there will I accept them. So come up higher, brother, and come up to these places where we can serve the Lord with less obstruction, and he will accept us. <clears throat> now, Colossians 3, we're all very familiar with this text also, tells us to seek the things that are above. Set your affection on the things that are higher. Well, why would we do this? Why? What is above? We know several things that are above. Ezekiel 17, <clears throat> 22 and 23. Thus saith the Lord God, I will also take of the highest, highest branch of the high cedar and will set it and will crop off the top of the young twigs, a tender one, and will plant it in a high mountain and eminent to be seen by all in these heights. Well, what are in these heights? In the mountain of the height of Israel, I will plant it and it shall bring forth boughs. I think that this is a picture of strength. The boughs of a tree is what supports the rest of the structure, the branches and the leaves and the twigs and things. And so this is a picture of strength to be found in the heights. And it shall bear forth fruit. There's nourishment in these high places. And a goodly cedar. It's pleasing to be in the high places of the Lord. It's satisfying to those who come. And the Lord says, And under it shall dwell all fowl of every wing, and the shadow of the branches thereof shall they dwell. We'll find safety in these high places also that the Lord provides for us. <clears throat> in Psalm 97, verse 9, it tells us another thing that is in the heights. It says, For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted above all gods. So the Lord himself is there. In Psalm 61, and verse 2, it says, From the ends of the earth I will cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. We know this rock to be our Lord Jesus. Again in Hebrews 7 and 26, for such a high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens. Our high priest is in these high places. We ascend unto him there. Again in Psalm 108 verse 4, it says, for thy mercy is great and high above the heavens, and thy truth reacheth unto the clouds. We'll find mercy and truth in these places, and that's just, just a sampling of the things that are in these high places. But that's why we want to call one another up, brethren. There's a lot of advantage to coming up higher into these heights, into the higher realms. But when we notice, when we have witnessed the Lord bringing us from one realm to a higher realm, we don't want to be satisfied in that place because we always know there are more heights to be gained. There are new heights to attain to. We want to keep our eyes focused continually upward. <clears throat> In Job 35 and verse 5, he says, Look unto the heavens and see, and behold the clouds which are higher than thou. As, as we continue to look up, we'll always see that the Lord has new heights to be attained to, yet much more to rise, to obtain in the heights. So, brethren, come up higher. Let us go into these heights continually. And there's even scriptures about singing. It says, now let us sing in the height of Zion. So let's do that this morning now. We'll, we'll have our song leader come forward. <clears throat> 